Hi, I'm Mayor David Black. I want to recognize the efforts by our Public Works crew for its timely fixing of a water main break last week during the sub-zero temperatures. Our street crews not only kept our streets clear of snow, but did double duty in fixing the water main as quickly as possible so that residents in that part of town would not be inconvenienced. We'll show you how they got it done in the freezing weather. We also want you to be safe while keeping warm during the cold weather. Please be aware when using space heaters and fireplaces. You'll find out what's the best way to stay safe and still be comfortable. We know that snow is piled up everywhere and that it can cause problems on roofs of homes and businesses. We'll tell you what to look for and what's the best way to handle the situation to avoid problems as well as being safe. Here's City Happenings for the week of January 18th. Thanks, Mayor Black. Many of you saw the city's public works crews out the past few weeks clearing snow. However, while that takes manpower and hours, Public Works still has other responsibilities to fulfill. On a bitterly cold Friday, a water main break was reported in a residential area. Our crews hit that hard and fast. We prioritize a water main break went ahead of the snow removal operations because we had our streets all opened up and we were just in the cleanup mode. So that, uh, that emergency took pro top priority. So we just uh, shuffled some staff around, provided staff for our water plant supervisor to run and we uh, moved uh, resources over there and uh, staff was able to uh, direct their focus there and uh, we pulled our backhoe and our operator and another piece of our dump truck over and sent them to the water break site to assist our water department and uh, we tackled that. We didn't have any underground utilities to deal with, uh, wasn't much frost in the ground, we were able to successfully uh, dig and complete and repair that water main break within about four hours. Friday morning was brutally cold. I think it was 20 below, wind chill was like 30 below, but uh, I gotta hand it to the men and women of my staff that when we do have an emergency, uh, they do arise to those occasions. They, they step it up another notch where they give 110, 115%. They know we have a job to do. We go out, we do it, we get it done and then we go about our business. So it's just the dedicated staff that I really appreciate that I have on board. During all of this, Public Works employee Dan Smith showed up unannounced, handing out some chair and warmth. Yeah. Would you like a brownie? That's the first I've heard about that, but I, I know that we, we try, you know, we the staff does look out for one another, you know. I know over the Christmas holidays we were plowing snow and uh, we do a bunch of cross training our sec, my main secretary, Louise Greco, we're, we're running 12-hour shifts on Christmas Day. Her husband, and she wasn't home to celebrate Christmas with her family, her husband donated two meals for our two shifts on Christmas Day. Took it upon himself to bring down two meals, fed, our, fed both staffs Christmas Day. It's just, uh, just something that staff does to keep one another happy and things are just, you know, we just uh, work together to... For the cause down here. With the cold weather, we've heard stories of people's attempts to stay warm in their houses only to have things go wrong. You can stay warm while being safe. Space heaters are going to be here for a long time to come. Newer space heaters are great in their safety features that there'll be an automatic cutoff if it's tipped over or if it senses that it's too hot it'll shut down automatically. Uh, but still that doesn't prevent a lot of the accidents that occur. Uh, we recommend keeping at least three feet distance between the space heater and the nearest flammable object, which is tough in a bedroom because there's not, some people don't have three feet to spare in their bedrooms. Uh, and then if you toss covers around or clothes get laying around, they could easily crowd up against the space heater. So those are, that's one of the big things with space heaters that we're concerned about. We can kind of break them down into two parts, fire safety and life safety. Fire safety is uh, the space heaters, that's probably our biggest issue. Uh, along with that are fireplaces and wood-burning stoves. Mm -hmm. Whether they have dirty flues and that causes a chimney fire or somebody puts, again, a combustible too close to the heat source. Um, could even be a, a regular piece of furniture that sits near a wood-burning stove and for months it could be fine. But then eventually that heat is going to dry out the, the material and then sooner or later it might reach its burning point and start a fire that way. Mm -hmm. So never leave those unattended. Always be aware of what's in the vicinity of the fireplace or the heat burning stove. Then on the, the life safety part of it is the carbon monoxide risk. Um, we've noticed a great increase in the number of calls because more and more people are getting carbon monoxide detectors. We love those, they're great, uh, they work very well. 
Um, hardly a day has gone by since this cold snap started that we haven't gone out on at least two or three carbon monoxide alarms in homes. Um, we don't mind going out on those at all because we want the people to be safe. And carbon monoxide is produced by incomplete combustion, whether it's in a furnace, a water heater, or it could be some appliance, if we call a, a wood-burning stove an appliance or a kerosene heater that isn't, isn't producing clean, clean burn off, mm -hmm. so it's producing the carbon monoxide. Um, the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning are so vague and it, it might just make somebody not feel well, but all that time they're breathing the carbon monoxide in causing damage to their body. So we want people to be aware of the dangers that are represented because of that. Mounting snow has been a concern as we endured three major snowfalls in a 28 day period. Many people are concerned about the amount of snow on their roofs. Here's some helpful facts. So what we're trying to do is just educate people on what to look for as precautionary signs prior to getting damage in your house. Those signs would include icicles hanging from your gutters, uh, you know, the, the water's not running out of the gutters like it's supposed to be. Uh, just a visual inspection around the outside of the house. If you have uh, a lot of valleys, peaks, different elevations in the house, you can imagine there's going to be spots there where the sun never hits, so the snow never melts. Obviously, if water's going to come into your house, it's going to come through your attic, through the roof. So I would definitely recommend getting up and looking in the attic before you get up on the roof. Obviously, getting on the roof, um, just, just getting on the roof itself is dangerous, and then you put the hazard of having the ice and the snow up there makes it even more dangerous. And so, I mean, there are some tools out there, that, you know, the roof rakes, um, you know, I would definitely recommend if you are going to get up there and do work, only clear the areas that you're concerned about. Don't do not do the whole entire roof. Use something soft. You can imagine if, you know, if your shingles are frozen, top and bottom, you start chiseling on that, you're going to break the tabs off, then come this spring, potential to have problems, uh, you know, with the, with the rain and stuff that are coming. So uh, brooms would be fine. Squeegees would be something that would work. The roof rakes, anything soft, softer plastic is what I would recommend. Uh, even if your gutters are clear themselves, uh, the, the water's going to run down the roof into the gutter system, try to get down the, the downspouts. A lot of guys don't th or people don't think about having to clean off the end of their downspouts. You know, that it wants to run into that snow, but the end of the downspout's all plugged up with snow. So if you get that cleared off, the whole system should work. I mean, that, that's a good, that would be a good sign. You know, if, if you can see the snow's melting during the day, you see water running down the, you know, down the pitched roof into the gutter, the, the, you know, the system should be working fine. Uh, you know, again, we're running into problems is where we have flat roofs. Uh, the snow, snow tries to melt, turns into ice during the day on a flat roof. A lot of flat roofs don't have proper drainage. Well, now at night that turns into ice, so ice weighs more, ice can do more damage than, than snow can do. The roofs are designed in Nebraska to hold the snow load, and, and they're sloped. I mean, again, unless you have a flat roof, you know, there's not much, much potential for concern. Again, you may have some areas where you have different elevations and stuff where you could get some big drifting. Those would be the areas maybe to, to keep an eye out for. But in general, all the roofs are designed to hold the, the snow load and the ice load in this area. There's still time to donate to the Stay Warm in the Winter and Household Pantry Drive. I'm happy to say that this was the brainchild of a city employee and will help those less fortunate in Papillion and Sarpy County. You can bring your items to City Hall, the Sump Library, the Sarpy County Courthouse, and Heartland Family Service. The drive ends January 22nd. I thank those who have already given and urge others to please give. For more about Papillion, go to www.papillion.org or just call the mayor's hotline at 827-1111. That's City Happenings for this week. Thanks for watching.